today we are going to talk about refraction of light so if i asked have you seen or have you placed a pencil inside a glass of water as shown in the figure you will see the pencil is bent right the reason for this is the bending of light rays when they enter from one medium to another medium with different optical properties so light rays that are coming to the eye from part of the pencil that is inside the water travel through the water before reaching the eye so when the light rays enter air from water the direction of light rays changes but the rays coming to the eye from the part of the pencil that is above the water level do not change the direction because they travel only through air before reaching the eye so bending of light rays upon entering one medium from another medium is known as refraction of light look here if you keep two pins one pin touching this glass block and another pin little bit further likewise and if you look through the glass block if you keep the eye here you will see the two pins will lie like this apart from each other and when you move the eye from let's say from A to D like this you will see that pins move closer and then the two pins will be in line at that moment you take another two pins and place it like this collinear to the other two pins so if you take these two pins you will see moment by moment these two pins will be getting closer and then and per moment you will see that there is only one pin other pin is behind this pin right? so if you keep another two pins to mark this light ray like this you can see only one pin even though there are four pins you can see only one pin right then after that what you are doing is you are taking this glass block out and then you are marking this light ray through the pins right before taking the glass block out you just have to sketch the outline of the glass block right? then just join these two points So as you can see, this light ray has bent when entering into the glass block and also it has bent away when moving away from the glass block. Right? So if I name this like this, if I name this light ray as A, here this point as B, this point as C and here as C. A B which comes to the glass block makes an angle with the normal which we call as the incident angle. Right? Then A B line is known as the incident ray. Right? Then the light ray which moves through the glass block after being refracted is called as the refracted ray so BC is called as the refracted ray B you can see it's incident ray BC you can call it as the refracted ray right then if you ask to find the refracted angle that will be the angle formed by refracted ray and this normal this will be the refracted angle okay. and the light ray which moves away from the glass block after being refracted it makes another refraction at this glass air intersurface right if you take this glass and this will be air glass air interface you can see there is another refraction right so 
this CB light ray which moves away from this blast block is known as the emergent ray. Right, that emerges, emergent ray that emerges out of the glass block. Right, so this angle that forms with the normal and the emergent ray is called as the emergent angle. Right, so if I erase this part, you can see the light ray has bended within two points. And that two points are one is air to glass interface, other one is glass to air interface. Right? Also, this incident angle is known as the angle of incidence, and refracted angle is known as the angle of refraction, and emergent angle can be also known as angle of emergence. Right? So <clears throat> if I erase these letters for you to get clear so you can see here the light ray has bended from traveling air to glass and glass to air so if you look if you look carefully you can see if this light ray that comes to the glass block didn't refract right it will go through this path so that angle of incident will be equal to this forming angle total angle but what has happened the light ray which comes to the glass block has been refracted right so if you see this here angle of incidence is greater than this angle of refraction right so if you take this normal drawn to the glass air intersurface, you can see light ray has bent towards the normal, right? The light ray which comes to the glass block has bent towards the normal, right? So, from traveling air to glass, what has happened? The light ray has bent towards this, towards this normal. And if you consider this part, right? The refracted line or the refracted light ray which comes to this glass air intersurface has been refracted again to form the emergent ray right so if you th see these angles also right if this glass air intersurface wasn't there what will happen the light ray will travel in a straight path but what has happened here it has been refracted away from the normal right this is the normal this light ray has been refracted away from the normal so as you can see from air to glass it is refracted towards the normal from glass to air it is refracted away from the normal right so if i take two interface as this sun is glass and this sun is air right if a light ray travels to this normal right if a light ray travels from air to glass hits this interface what will happen in previous example it was bent towards the normal right so it was bent towards the normal so this will bend like this the correct path that meant to be was this but it is refracted towards this normal path so if you see this it has been refracted towards the normal and if I take the opposite of this if I take glass here and air above right? and if a light ray strikes like this what will happen this is a normal right as you can remember in previous example in the glass block example you learned that the light ray got refracted away from the normal so this was the path that was meant to be going but it will refract away from the normal so it will refract away from the normal like this
So, when you consider these two mediums, when air and glass is considered, if you consider the velocities of light in air and glass, you will notify that the speed of light or the velocity of light in air is much higher than that of glass. So, air will be the rare medium here and glass will be the denser medium here. Right? If you consider these, so also in air the speed of light is high, therefore this will be the rare medium, this will be the denser medium. Rare and denser medium. So if I take like this, another surface with, uh, let's say, here water and here it's air, yeah. right? So, if a light ray comes to this interface, what will happen? If you consider these two mediums, air will be the rare medium and water will be the denser medium. So, what will happen? Rare to denser, light ray will be bent towards a normal. So, it was meant to be like this, but it will bend towards the normal. See how a ray diagram is drawn. Let's say this is air water surface, and here below you have water. Right? Here there is water and this air. Let's say I keep the eye like this. Normally, when you look above the water, the fish seems to appear a little bit above the actual position. So, let's see how this refraction happens. Okay. Number one, you are drawing a ray diagram. Let's say there are many light rays coming, but we draw only two light rays to identify the correct position. So, if I take a light ray that moves, from this fish mouth perpendicular to this surface what will happen there will be no any refraction right so light ray will be moving perpendicular to this surface if i take another ray that comes from the same place with a little bit angle right what happens this is water this is air denser to rare bends away from the normal so this will be moving away from the norm, right? So as you can see here, even though these light rays are apart, this I can capture these light rays. For this ray diagram, I am just taking this angle a little bit greater so that the image form will be identified clearly, right? So if I take this refracted angle and the refracted light ray, I can draw backwards in which this may the light ray right? so that the image of the fish forms here here so let's say this fish is the object and fishes seem to be appearing slightly above so this is the position of that image of the fish so for us, you can see the fish right here, but actually the fish lies above this object. Okay, let's move on to laws of refraction. So, if you take laws of refraction, there are two laws, right? So, based on the law, refraction is done always. So, first law says that the incident ray the normal drawn perpendicular to the, the interface and the refracted ray lies on the same plane right so if you take these three things one is the incident ray the normal and the refracted ray will lie on the same face then the second law of refraction you can say it like this when a light ray moves to the interface and when it refracts 
it always forms two angles one is incident angle and the other one is the refracted angle right so if this is the normal it will always form these two angles right the ratio of the incident angle to that of angle of refraction will be a constant for the two media if you take this as water and this as air right the sign value made by these two angles will be always a constant from moving water to air right so you can write it as the sine value of this i divided by sine value of r will be a constant right so this constant depends only on these two media right so this constant is given a name as index of refraction We call this also as simple length, right? So ratio of sine value of incident angle to the sine value of angle of refraction is a constant, and that constant is given a name as index of refraction. So this, so this index of refraction depends only on these two media. When light ray travels from water to air, you can write this index of refraction as a symbol like this is the index of refraction that is simple length from water to air right when a light ray moves from water to air you can write the index of refraction is w n a right if you take these two medium if you reverse these two mediums that is air to water right so let's say now the light ray moves from air to water right what will happen this air is rare water is denser so that refracted ray will be moving from rare medium to denser medium so refracted ray will be moved towards the normal so you can draw this like this right. let's say we also this angle as incident angle or the angle of incident this angle can be written as angle of refraction right so if you take the sine value of this that is sine i divided by sine r this will also be a constant right so you can symbolize this as the light ray moving from air to water this n will be a w a r to water that is index of refraction will be a n w if you take these two mediums as one is vacuum another one is glass right one is vacuum if you take two mediums with one is vacuum and another one is glass you can see the same thing happens normal way in previous example the index of refraction depended on both the media but if you take vacuum here it depends only on one media right that is glass if you take water here index of refraction will depend only on the glass or water or whatever the medium we are taking other than the vacuum right so if you take this you can write index of refraction as n vacuum to glass right we normally don't write this vacuum so this will be index of refraction of glass index of refraction of glass will be ng right so if we use two mediums one is vacuum another one is a glass you can get index of refraction of glass if we use uh, vacuum if we use vacuum and water if we use vacuum and water if the light ray enters from vacuum to water you can calculate index of refraction of water likewise when vacuum is used you can get the direct answer 
for index of refraction of that certain medium right but normally taking vacuum is not practical so we always use instead of vacuum we always use air here so normally from air to glass index of refraction will be ng we normally write like ng right even though that is a n g that will be equal to index of refraction of glass here also if we use air instead of this this will be index of refraction of water right because taking vacuum as a medium is not practical if you take this value that is index of refraction that is also called as refractive index of that certain medium doesn't have any unit right so refractive index of a certain medium is always the sine value of the inside angle divided by sine value of r so there will be no any units for this refractive index or index of refraction refractive index or the index of refraction can be also taken as a ratio between the speed of light in vacuum divided by speed of light in the med given medium 